Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Small Schools Districts Association Parent Night hosted by CollegeWise. Thank you so much for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen at any point to type questions to our presenters. Your camera and microphone are off so our panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions happening. So please be sure to sign up uh, for more. And also there will be a college fair tomorrow night. So we hope your students can join that. This presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at strivescan.com backslash SSDA. And with that, I'll turn it over to Ashley. Wonderful, thank you so much. Thanks everyone for joining us this evening. We're really excited to talk to you about the college essay. Go ahead and switch over to our PowerPoint. So how to write a college essay. Um, we're gonna go through a few tips and tricks. Um, I'm one of our managing counselors here at CollegeWise. I've worked in the admissions sphere now between test preparation and independent college counseling for the last eight years. Um, prior to that, I received my uh, undergraduate degree in history from UCLA and my master's of fine arts and creative writing from Bennington College. So two diametrically opposed uh, college experiences. Um, and I'll go ahead and pass it over to Emma now and let her introduce herself. Good evening, everyone. It's a pleasure to connect with you. My name is Emma Edibayo. I work at Washington University in St. Louis, Missouri, uh, or WashU as we are commonly known as. Um, it's absolutely a pleasure again to connect with you guys here tonight. Um, I've spent about 10 years, maybe a little bit more, uh, here in college admissions supporting students at a variety of institutions, such as the University of Illinois, the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, Lawrence Technological University, and WashU. So I'm really excited to talk to you a little bit more about college admissions and just kind of what we are looking for uh, when we are taking a look at your essays. Awesome. Thanks, Emma. So I'd love for you to share a little bit about WashU before we dig in. Absolutely. So Wash U is a medium-sized private Research One institution. Um, that Research One part is kind of a fancy federal designation, but ultimately we are an ins institution that is actively engaged in research, and it is something that attracts quite a bit um, in, in terms of our students' interest. Um, in addition to that, we have five um, undergraduate academic divisions that students apply directly to. So one of the great things about Wash U is you can dive in immediately. Um, and start studying in your area of interest, whether it's art, architecture, um, McKelvey School of Engineering, or our Olin Business School, or our College of Arts and Sciences, which is our largest academic division. You can absolutely explore and mix and match across uh, different majors and minors. Uh, we do have about 7,000 undergraduate students, but do not let that number scare you. Our average class size is about 24 to 29 students. Less than 3% of our classes will have more than 100 students. And so just know that that 7 to 1 teacher-faculty ratio is real. It happens. You will get to know your professors, and they will get to know you by name and story, which is our unofficial model. And we proudly do meet 100% of students' demonstrated financial need. That's a really fancy way of saying um, if you need us to cover your cost of attendance at our institution, we are able to do that. And for families who make under $75,000 annually, we are able to provide financial aid that does not include any student loans. Wonderful. Well, before we jump in, I wanted to tell um, you all a little bit about CollegeWise. We are a college admissions consulting company. We've been in business for over 20 years now, back when our founder, Kevin McMullen, was helping students fill out paper applications in their kitchen tables, um, and now we've come a long way. Uh, I'm one of our, as I mentioned, managing counselors. I oversee some of our West Coast offices and help students through the college application process. We also offer a number of tutoring services. So if you're in need of those diagnostic exams, you're always welcome for those free exams to come check us out. Um, so a few key tips to remember as you're writing those college essays. Now, this isn't going to be any sort of um, prescriptive formula. I know a lot of students kind of get used to that five paragraph essay format they learned in, in their English class in early high school. Um, and this is going to be less prescrip prescriptive, pardon, and more about finding the best way to tell your story um, in order to really share who you are with college admission officers like Emma. So our first tip here is going to be don't try to impress, which always feels really counterintuitive for students, right? It feels like their four years in high school have really culminated to this point. Um, and they're wanting to 
to share everything that they have to offer to these colleges that they're excited at the prospect of attending. But actually, when students try too hard to impress, they actually do just the opposite. That's when we see that students are using, you know, phrases that don't sound like them. They're, they're talking about things in a way that sounds really generic and basic, even if it's something that was really meaningful to them. I think a really great example is, you know, students saying something like, during my junior year, I was fortunate enough to be given the unique opportunity to perform over 50 hours of volunteer work at the hospital. And this was great because I was, I'm hoping to become a doctor. Um, and it just tells you nothing about that student, right? It's so, you know, pretty, bland and you don't get a sense of who they are or truly what they care about. Um, whereas I know one of our favorite stories that one of our students wrote was about how she was a great loser and she both lost material items and lost elections and, um, you know, things for student class president and um, ASB student president. And it was just a really charming essay because it really demonstrated her resilience and it was so clear that she was confident and comfortable with who she was. And I know some people probably blanched at the idea of talking about being a great loser because why would you want to tell an admissions officer about the things that you didn't get to do, right? Um, but it was a way for her to really showcase um, some great lessons that she learned and again, show a lot of personality. So don't try to impress or you'll do just the opposite, unfortunately. Um, own your stories. I really love this one because it's oftentimes the best essays. If you were to talk about them in abstract, the topics might not sound necessarily that thrilling and that's okay. You don't need to have a revelatory story or some crazy phenomenon that happened in your life to have a really compelling college essay. Instead, what you want to do is make sure that it's something in the way that you tell it that only you could tell that story. So making sure that the details come through really loud and clear and that the emotion behind that experience is, is writ across the page. Um, I know one example, oftentimes the students, you know, if they were involved in performing arts in high school, they kind of fall into the trap of talking about being nervous before a big important important performance and knowing that it mattered and they needed to play well and so they tried to concentrate and instead it's really helpful to have students imbue those stories with with physical details or maybe even analogies that only they would think to compare that instance to whether it's the nervous feeling of reminding them of the first time they went to disneyland or um, whether it's talking about seeing their dad in the audience with his video camera and feeling confident and comfortable seeing his familiar face and knowing that he was cheering them on. Um, all of those details really can make such a big difference and it's so important for students to really make the story their own through all of those, those details. Don't repeat information. So oftentimes I know some of our students are so excited about a particular experience in high school and they feel like that is the thing that they need to highlight at every step of their application. I had one student this last year um, who had some really thoughtful, creative, successful student government campaigns in high school. Um, and that was really cool and meaningful for him. And it was something that we definitely wanted to share on his application, but something we had to discuss was we maybe didn't need to talk about it in every single essay, right? Um, because that would, his enthusiasm would come through in his activity summary. There are other places on the application where students get to share where they've spent their time um, and what the meaningful things that are to them. So it's really important that students think of essays as filling in some of the gaps, right? The admissions officer is going to have your transcript. They're going to have potentially your letters of recommendation from your teachers. They're going to have a summary of the activities and the hours you've spent with them, um, a brief description. So they really want to get to know who the person is behind these statistics and kind of basic information. And the essay is a great way for you to share more about who you are, as opposed to just reiterating the same thing 13 different times. Lastly, I really love this one. Your essay should sound like you. Admission officers, I'm, a, I'm sure will tell you, 
know that you're a teenager. They're in the business of admitting teenagers. They don't expect you to sound like a 60 year old Nobel laureate who has a PhD, right? Um, and so it's really important that you're using language that's authentic to you. I like to tell my students, think of it as you're speaking to your favorite teacher, right? So maybe you're not as casual, you're not using as many colloquialisms and slang as you would with your friends. There's still that little bit of, um, I guess, sort of professionalism, right? Um, but it gives you a sense that students should speak the way that they would speak, you know, right in the way that sounds authentic to themselves, practice it by reading out loud to see if it sounds like them or if it feels stilted. I know oftentimes for whatever reason, plethora is the word that students want to use. And very infrequently have I heard a high school student actually use that in conversation with me. So it's important that students use language that, that really depicts who they are and they can still write a really creative and thoughtful and compelling essay um, without sacrificing and ending up becoming actually less compelling in the process. A couple overused essay stories, and this is not to say that these can't yield some great material, but what I generally see is that a lot of students will turn to these topics and say very similar things. Um, so sports taught me the importance of teamwork and committing to my goals. Sports is an incredible um, way for students to learn a lot of skills, but if there isn't more to your experience in let's say varsity volleyball, then maybe that's not a great thing to write about in your personal statement. My trip to another country broadened my horizons. Traveling is great. Learning about other cultures is fantastic. But if your experience is going to be pretty basic of I interacted with different people for the first time and I learned some new things, that's probably not going to stand out amongst other essays. Community service, I know, is a big one that pops up with a lot of my students, um, especially those that are really involved with National Charity League and organizations like that. Um, community service taught me the importance of helping people. That is a really valuable lesson to learn, but it's not the most important thing or the more, most interesting thing you could share with an admissions officer. They would rather hear about a very like compelling experience that you had potentially in one of those volunteer opportunities as opposed to talking ad nauseum about how volunteering is important to you and flashing all of the hours that you spent volunteering. And lastly, my leadership position proves that I can work well with others. That's going to come through in your activity summary when they see those various leadership positions that you have. And so find something else that you can underscore. And again, this isn't to say that you can't have a compelling sports essay. I had um, a really fantastic student write a great story about how he started off varsity freshman year and kind of got knocked down a little bit and building himself back up was a really great learning experience, humbled him a lot. That was so much more interesting than hearing about, you know, the great races that he, he won. Um, and again, it feels counterintuitive because why wouldn't you want to impress the admissions officer? But um, again, you want to keep in mind how you can own those stories and, and share in an authentic, unique way. So oftentimes in those coming of age movies, we see that there's the one college essay, which is typically the personal statement, but there's actually a lot of other essays. Um, a lot of colleges will typically have supplemental essays in different types. You know, Emma will be able to speak to Wash U's specific supplemental essays, but um, it's important for, for families to keep in mind that that personal statement isn't going to typically be the thing that makes it or break it, breaks it. And there's gonna be lots of other opportunities for students to share their stories. Okay, I'll go ahead and kick it over to you, Emma. Thank you. Um, so yes, Ashley is absolutely right. I couldn't agree more with all of the things that she has shared so far. Um, but yes, there definitely are different types of essays and they do have different purposes in terms of your college application um, or potentially a scholarship application. So it's going to be incredibly important that you take some time just to identify and learn exactly what essays a school might be asking for, as well as which ones are optional or perhaps in Watch You's case, for example, which ones do we use for our merit-based um, academic division scholarship, which is our supplemental one. Um, so are we going to consider all aspects of your application for scholarships 
Yes, but we are going to ask you a very specific question. Um, our question essentially, just to sum it up, because it is very wordy, is to just simply ask you, what are you most passionate about? What makes you lose all track of time? Tell us more about your interests. And we hope that when you write your answer to that essay question, you're going to talk about it within an academic context, because again, it is for a merit-based academic division scholarship, right? So again, this is a great opportunity where you are able to talk about your passion, but we also wanna know how does this tie to your academic uh, inquisitive nature? So definitely, again, you're going to wanna make sure that you take some time as you are reviewing different essays to understand what it is that they are asking for. Uh, your college essay is one of many, many pieces that a university will use in, term, in order to determine if you are being admitted or not. Um, please know, like Ashley said, your essay is not going to make or break your application. Um, I once worked at a place where I had a student write a really, really unique essay about couches. He went on and on about couches and how it was really important to him um, to, to go to college and learn how to be a couch. And that when he graduated from our university, he was excited to go back to his high school and be a football couch. What word do you think he was saying there? Yeah, coach, you're probably saying to yourself, coach, I'm pretty sure it's coach. You're right, it's coach, but he did not, of course, probably use spell check or you know, other human eyes to just double check his essay. It wasn't a bad essay, it was a great essay. It still sticks with me all these years, right? So understand again, it is incredibly important that you give yourself some time and just do a little research in terms of understanding the different essays a school might be asking. Most institutions have different application types, but generally our applications will open at some point in the summer before your senior year began. So usually around August 1st um, for schools like WashU that use things like the Common App or the Coalition application. So definitely pro tip, check out a school's website, maybe mid to late July, and you'll probably see the essay questions that they have for the upcoming school year. And you can take some time over the summer to start working on those essays and not be too stressed as you move, move on into the next school year. Um, on the next slide, follow directions and answer the question. Like I shared earlier, our supplemental essay question is asking you technically two things. What are you passionate about and how does that relate to your academic interests? So it's very easy for a lot of students who apply to WashU to only talk about the thing that they are most passionate about. They often will forget to also include that academic piece. And again, that is for scholarship consideration. Now, does it mean that they're not gonna be admitted to WashU? Absolutely not. But it does mean it ma makes it a little bit tougher to consider them for scholarship uh, when there are other students who of course are answering the question and following those directions. Um, one of the things that students may often struggle with is a word limit. Um, if we are asking you for about 300 words, when you've been in college admissions for a couple of years, you know exactly what 300 words look like. Um, we're always pretty gracious if you go a little bit over or you go a little bit under, but 300 words is very different than a thousand words. So it's going to be incredibly important that you again are answering the question and of course following the directions um, in the prompt that you're given to, given to you. Um, a big part of being an adult is sometimes your ability to follow directions. And so not that this is a test, but it is a good way for us to understand um, outside of perhaps challenging the rules, are you someone who understands what we might be asking you to do? So definitely encourage you, take your time again, read through that prompt, make sure you're understanding what it is exactly that we're answering. And of course, follow the directions that were given to you. On the next slide, It's all about getting in the right mindset. So I definitely encourage you after this session tonight, I'm sure you'll have plenty of other things to do, but please do consider writing this down or go back to the recording and think about these three statements that are listed here and just write out some things. It doesn't even have to be full sentences. It can totally be bullets. If that's the way your mind works, my mind works in bullets all the time, but, or just even a couple of words, but think about these three sentences. My perfect day would look like, my favorite birthday was, I am most proud of. And the reason we're encouraging you to do that and to think about these particular statements, like we talked about earlier with uh, commonly used essay ideas and prompts, it isn't that we're looking for you to write something amazingly unique and that no one else has ever written or talked about it before. It can be something as simple as your favorite birthday. It could be something as uniquely personal and special to you as your perfect day. But again, it's an opportunity for you to think about the things that matter to you. 
Um, on the next slide, you're gonna see a big list of words. All of these are adjectives. These are words that you could perhaps use to describe you, yourself. Um, I know we have perhaps a mix in the room of parents, counselors, students, but it's incredibly important that perhaps you take some time to just think about, again, five words that would either describe you or describe your student. Um, ultimately, we make a lot of decisions and ultimately there's particular maybe core values that you have, things that are incredibly important to you, things that inspire you to perhaps work with others, help others, things you want someone to know about you. And if someone had to sum up those things and hopefully your word is listed, think about those words. But more importantly, when you think about these particular words, I also want you to think about a story or a time in which it made sense. Um, and it really speaks to and gives an example of exactly that word that you might use. Um, I had a student once share that she's really interested in communication, that she might wanna have a talk show, but she seemed very, very shy. And I was like, okay, that is great. Tell me more about your career and the things you're interested in. And so she kept sharing more and more. And I said, you know, a word you could use for that would be talkative. Was there a time when anyone ever said you were talkative or talked a lot? And she was like, yeah, my mom said I was always chattering when I was two. And I was like, that's it. That's exactly what you can use to start your story off, right? And share with us exactly, of course, your interest area, what you want to do in your future plans. But again, how you've always been talkative since you were a little kid. That is an easy way to kind of just kick a story off and share a little bit about yourself but still allow it to be incredibly personal to you and your lived experiences. So definitely take some time, try to have fun with this process. I know it can feel really scary and daunting and that this will make or break you, but I assure you it will not. It just simply gives us an opportunity to get to know a little bit more about you. While it is Washi's model to know you by name and story, I feel pretty confident in saying all my other colleagues at other universities and colleges across the nation absolutely also want to get to know you. They want to know your story and they want to know your name as well. Um, on our final slide, or at least my final slide here, um, here's another example. Tell a story about you. Like I said earlier, that young lady talked about how talkative she was and what her family would often say um, and how she, of course, was very funny and had great humor. Um, but again, challenge yourself. So I love this one because I love food. Mention your favorite food and use two adjectives you would choose especially if you chose my perfect day. So think about it this way. If you picked my perfect day was, let's talk about that food you love. And again, pick two adjectives that you would choose. But ultimately remember, this is all about you and how you are experiencing uh, your life. And what we're simply trying to understand is what you got from it. Um, and hopefully for us, it creates a picture that lets us think and see you on our campus doing and engaging in just that exact activity that you described. Turn it back over to Ashley. <laughs> and thanks, Eva. It was super informative. So we've got a few resources for you all. Um, a few supplemental essay prompts to choose from, some common essay writing tips and scholarship essay writing tips for Eva. Thanks so much for sharing this with everyone. Um, so I would definitely recommend checking out some different resources so that you can start for students and families thinking about what types of essays you might be writing um, in the fall. Um, there's lots of different types. And again, as Emma said, kind of keeping your eye on those college websites to see when those essay prompts are coming out. Also would like to um, do just a quick recap. Again, the biggest thing is to be your authentic self. Don't try to impress the admission officers own your story with some good thoughtful details to repeat information and sound like you. We'd love to open it up for questions now um, so that we're answering things that are on everyone's minds. If there's anything on questions still, um, feel free to throw them in the Q&A in the chat and, and then I will be happy to dig into them. And I will actually share the links in the chat as well as some information about WashU if you did want to get to know WashU a little bit more, um, as we may not be able to join you guys at the college fair tomorrow. This is always a funny thing with these virtual. We don't know if anyone's taking, so I'll give it a minute. Yeah, 
again, in the chat, you'll find all the links that were shared in the PowerPoint. Um, so again, supplemental essays from College Fine, um, another website that pulls Common App essays for you, um, and Princeton Review did provide some great scholarship essay tips. Looks like we've got one question. Um, what do you think about the use of contractions? And then I'll let you answer that one as our as an admissions officer. Yeah, I don't mind them. Um, and to be honest, especially if you are perhaps struggling with um, being really talkative like myself and you talk, talk a lot, contractions may help you get a little bit closer to the, the word count that you're having there or seeking to have. So definitely not opposed to contractions, but totally okay if you use them or don't use them. <laughs> I will say when my students are a little more verbose and we're a little tight on that word count, I will go in and be like, oh, quick. I, I am becomes I'm, I cannot, can becomes can't. Um, it's definitely helpful. <laughs> And that, while we wait to see if anyone else has any other questions, are there any other essays that come to mind, like your couch essay that really stuck out from your years? Yeah, I would say it varies. So one of the things that happens is there's just certain things that are really common um, that show up in essays, and it's not a bad thing at all. I definitely love reading every student's uh, spin on different things, but I always can kind of tell, even if, let's say, I lost every other piece of your application, which wouldn't happen. Totally do all this in a computer. Um, but let's say I lost every single piece and I write your essay because I've been doing this for so long. I'm pretty good at guessing like your major, your interest area. So it's always really fun for me to kind of take a peek at the essay first and just read that and then go back and be like, okay, what are they actually interested in academically? Um, so for a while, which of course makes total sense, Marvel was like the biggest thing out there. So love, love, love reading about Marvel. Definitely a comic book and a superhero junkie. So I was like excited all the time. Um, but what I quickly realized is if someone talked about Thanos' gauntlet, um, they were probably an engineering applicant. And so <laughs> for us in our admissions committee, it was always like, oh, gauntlet, engineering student probably. And usually they were. And it wasn't a bad thing. It was fun for us, but we definitely totally understood why. Um, and it makes complete sense. If you really think about that gauntlet there, that is an engineering piece of like genius. Like how do you have this gauntlet that can like do all these things? Of course, you know, it's the infinity stones, but you have this gauntlet. It's designed very well. It works, it's functional. Like it just made complete sense after a while that of course an engineering student would love the gauntlet, right? So that was something that was always pretty fun for us uh, to just kind of glean at. Um, with business students, we know that they usually will share with us a little bit about a business that they have started. So we always appreciate um, that entrepreneurship for our business students if they are able to do that. Um, and some of them aren't, but they always maybe talk about really great activities that they've had, being able to maybe do an internship um, or work with a startup or a company. And so that's something that I think is pretty, pretty cool to like do. Um, definitely when I was their age, 17 or 18, I had like a part-time job, but I had like no idea what my life would entail or what it is that I wanted to do. So we always appreciate being able to see like a student's activities um, show up a little bit in their essays and like really just continue to, to round them out. I love that, that's awesome. That's so funny that you found that interesting connection and that there was that um, popping up again and again. Um, we've got another one here from a parent who says, my son's school said they will be letting us know what the essay questions are to choose from. Um, where did those questions come from? Which my sense is probably it's going to be the common application personal statement prompts. Um, there's actually a new one this year that's about 
um, expressing gratitude for something that's shaped you, which I'm really excited about. Um, that's a new one. But if that's, if one of the kind of main guiding prompts isn't a good fit, I always tell my students, there's literally a prompt that says share an essay on any topic of your choice. So um, it really can be, again, the best way for you to convey your story, whether that matches one of the six other prompts or that seventh kind of catch-all prompt. Mm -hmm. And I would say if you choose your own essay, um, you may want to kind of share with us a prompt of some sort, and it doesn't have to be like something fully fleshed out. It could even be in the opening line. Like, you know, this is an essay I had to write for, you know, my history class on the Harlem Renaissance. And then kind of go into your essay and share a little bit more. Um, definitely, I would say if you are choosing to use um, an academic school essay for that, share your own, you may want to think about how you might alter that a little bit so that it isn't just reading as like this dense um, or like really academic -y, which is totally not a word, uh, piece though. Um, and the reason why is not because we won't understand what it is that you're sharing, but the common essay is really actually about you. And so while we are excited to, to know and learn more about, let's say, the Harlem Renaissance, and that you, of course, are a strong writer, you've done great research in the area, it doesn't really necessarily tell us about you. Now, if perhaps the student said they wanted to talk about that um, and really went into it and, and also decided to talk a lot about Duke Ellington because they're really interested in, let's say, jazz, and they play an instrument, that would add that personal piece to the essay. So I would say no matter what it is that you're writing about, it seems really weird, but think about how to make it quite frankly about you. You have to kind of bring it back to you and the things that you are interested in and the things that you are passionate about. Um, and it is a really fine line to walk sharing those things without fully like repeating your activity section or um, your resume if the school accepts it. But um, I would always tell families and students to think of it this way. Your application is about showing your breadth and your depth. Um, a lot of times people are focused on like this well-rounded applicant. And I like to say, well-rounded is dead. Um, not that you can't be well-rounded, but again, it's about breadth and depth. And, and that's exactly what I mean in my last example, right? We talked about the Harlem Renaissance. We talked about you studying it for class. And then we, we turned the story to you being maybe interested in jazz and playing that particular type of music and what it means to you. Again, you are able to show us some breadth and some depth in terms of your interest. So definitely don't be afraid, particularly with your essays, to redirect the conversation back to you and what you got out of something or how you connected deep on a deeper level um, with a particular um, area, subject, or, or even person. Yeah, I find that so, it's so funny that you mentioned like turning those academic essays inwards because I feel like so many students, like they've just become afraid of the personal pronoun, right? And the, yeah. the common app, personal statement is nothing but the personal pronoun, right? It's all I, it's all me. Mm -hmm. We've got a great one here. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, I was gonna say from a parent that says, how many people read your essays? Yes, okay, so it does depend on the um, admissions office. Like I shared, I worked a few different places, so it has varied over the years, but at least a minimum of two people will be taking a look at a student's application, and it's specifically for WashU more than two people. Um, we have what we call an admissions committee. Um, and so more than two people are going to look at it, but at the very minimum, two people will have their eyes on it. And then we kind of actually just gather all together and talk about all of the applicants um, and the applications that we receive. Um, but it's never a situation of us comparing a student to another student or um, a school versus another school. Um, for WashU and, and all the places that I've worked, we really focus on what's known as holistic admissions. So we, we really are looking at a student as a whole person um, and all the attributes and all the things that they are sharing with us in the application. And so again, the essay is that opportunity to make it just a little bit, again, more personal and about you and how you're engaging. I love that you mentioned holistic admissions because I know so often I hear from parents this hypothetical binary, right? Of, well, if my student is going up against this student, that's exactly the same. And it really doesn't work that way. No, it doesn't. Um, I would say think of it a lot like um, a track, track and field, like you're running a race. Don't worry about the other lanes. You stay in your lane and you focus on running your race, um, specifically a relay, because the relay is always, I'm not a runner, but it always trips me out. So I'm like, oh my God, they're behind, they're behind. And they're actually not. They're totally running their own race. They're handing off that baton. They are making it. They're going to win. But again, it, it, it does feel like you're running against other people, but it's not. Think of it a lot like a relay race. Each person and a part of your journey has to do their part. 
from you submitting your application, from you, the student, writing your essay, to your school counselor sending us your school profile so that we understand uh, the context and the academic opportunities offered to you. So definitely think of it as a relay race and you are going to win at the end. You're going to be admitted uh, to a great school that will be absolutely perfect for you. That's wonderful. We've got another question here from a parent. How much weight does an essay hold regarding acceptance? It can be considered and will be considered, but I wouldn't say that it holds as much weight as families think. Um, this answer, of course, will depend on each institution, but the essay, again, just adds additional context. Um, so for instance, uh, we are all living in a, a Panasonic or a pandemic, whichever P word you prefer, um, but ultimately with the fact that we are living with reduced activities, reduced ability to interact perhaps the way that we want to and engage in the things that we want, Having an essay and being able to allow a student, which is one of the things um, pretty much most of the major applications did this year, which is have a section for students to talk about how COVID-19 has impacted them, that allowed us to have, again, additional context in terms of what specifically um, were they experiencing in COVID, right? We broadly know that everyone was experiencing reduced ability to interact um, or leave their home, right? But that may have other impacts. Implications. Um, let's say, for example, you live in a multi-generational home. Um, so grandma, grandpa, cousins, aunts, everyone is there, but also everyone is using the internet, right? And maybe it was a little harder for your student to log online to do their coursework. That is something that we're going to want to know. And it's not something that would really be conveyed anywhere else, except perhaps either in that essay, the personal one, or in the COVID-19 section of the application or the essay area. So definitely, I would say, think of your essay as just adding that additional context. It's really easy for us to learn and understand things, but it's your opportunity to explain further. Um, so when a student does choose to maybe talk about an extracurricular activity, it's really important to them. Um, I'll use NHS, for example, um, which is the National Honor Society. Oftentimes, they don't tell us that it's the National Honor Society because they assume we know. Luckily, we do. But let's say your National Honor Society is really big on raising money and donating that money. And let's say there's a student at another school and their National Honor Society is actually really big in terms of doing community service with a very specific organization. I'm not going to know that unless you share with us specific details or add additional context um, in terms of maybe an essay or in that extracurricular definition and explanation that that is kind of the angle and the mission of your particular organization. So definitely just think of the essays as an opportunity to expand um, upon either hopefully you personally, um, or expand a little bit more about your interest in a particular area. I'm glad you mentioned too that COVID-19 section and I think also that additional information section essay because I know mm -hmm. that would be really helpful for students. You know, for my students who have had a stumbling block in high school, whatever that looks like, they can sometimes feel like the personal statement is their chance to tell their story. And there's also another place for them to explain, hey, this is what happened. Here's how I've grown, here's how I've improved, and it doesn't need to define them necessarily in that personal statement. Yeah, absolutely. So yes, take advantage of all the places and spaces. Um, and I would also say it's it's totally okay if it feels um, a little awkward or weird to just share so much um, when you're like, I'm sharing, but I don't know if I know you, I don't really know you, I don't know who else is reading this. And so it can feel really um, weird or just, incredibly intimate, perhaps some of the questions that are being asked. And it might make you feel that we are asking you to be extremely, extremely vulnerable with us. Um, if you want to be vulnerable, be vulnerable and share, but definitely you don't have to. I think it's important that you share as much as you feel comfortable sharing um, and letting us kind of uh, understand a little bit of, of what's happening. Um, I think back to a student that I had who had shared that their grades uh, kind of dropped a little bit in the middle of their sophomore year. And I was like, okay. That, I see that it's in your transcript, right? But I also had another student go even further to share, you know, my grades dropped a little bit in the middle of my sophomore year. I was actually battling cancer, right? So that was very specific. It was very clear. The student didn't go into any other detail. It was literally just that one line that just kind of shared that information. And, you know, they talked about other things and other aspects. But that one piece of information was enough for me to, you know, of course, share and make note of, and of course, helped in terms of my advocacy for, for the student, because your admissions officer is going to be your biggest cheerleader. We're always going into our respective uh, admission committees saying, we want this student here, we want you here, and anything we can share with them, giving us the opportunity to make you even more personable, 
more human, increase your likability with the admissions committee, we're going to do. And so being able to share with the admissions committee who maybe were concerned that that student, again, had a kind of a dip in their grades and they weren't you know, pleased with that, being able to share it, hey, there's some context here. There was something going on. The student had an illness. That was really helpful. So again, don't feel like you have to overshare or share every single thing. Share what you feel comfortable sharing, um, but know that we are looking at it in the most positive light that we can and just consider it an additional piece of information to make sure that we, of course, are advocating on your behalf. Well, I really appreciate that you shared that. Have we run out of questions, it looks like? I think okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Well, thank you everyone for joining us. When this window closes, there'll be a link to a very quick four question survey. We appreciate any feedback that you can share with us. Uh, also, again, this is just one of many sessions being hosted. So please sign up for more, join tomorrow's college fair. And in about a week, you'll be able to find this session and others at strivescan.com backslash SSDA. So thank you so much, Emma and Ashley for being our presenters tonight. And again, thank you everyone for joining us. Have a wonderful evening. Thank <laughs> you.